right folks, well let's do one more round of profiling. So this time we're going to look at Valgrind. Um, we're specifically going to use this for doing uh, runtime analysis and memory use analysis of our programs, but Valgrind can actually do a whole lot more. It can do a bunch of sort of code quality checks. Um, it can do uh, checks for memory leaks and that sort of thing. So there's a lot of debugging information you can grab from Valgrind as well, but, uh, but we'll settle for the profiling aspects for now. So again, same sort of idea. It's another injection-based profiler where we're gonna have to compile the program with a particular flag so that this is gonna work. And what it actually does in terms of the runtime analysis, so for gprof, that actually tried to measure the time spent in each function for Valgrind, it goes through and just counts how many instructions, how many machine code instructions ran while a particular function was active or while the program was active. So you're getting something closer to a count of the number of clock cycles, which again is going to be a pretty, is going to reflect pretty accurately the time spent, but it's not actually a seconds based approach. So similar kind of information, just a different approach to it. Um, again, we'll come back and take a look at Valgrind in a few minutes to look at memory use. And um, again, ultimately you can use this for looking for memory leaks as well. So the compilation is going to use the dash G flag instead of the uh, assorted flags we used for gprof last time around. And again, it's gonna go through, we'll run the program. It's gonna produce a data file someplace. We'll talk about the format for that data file in just a second. And then we're gonna run another tool to analyze the data file afterwards. So our two-step process, run the program and then um, run the analysis on it. So running the program through Valgrind to produce the data is a little funky looking. So we're gonna run Valgrind and Valgrind has a bunch of different tools it can be used with. Callgrind is the one that does the runtime analysis for us. So we're going to run Valgrind. This tool option is going to be for call grind, and then you give the instructions for how to run the program. So what the name of the executable is and whatever command line arguments it's going to take. So that will go through and run it through Valgrind to do the analysis that we want. It's going to produce an output file that's going to be called callgrind.out.sum integer. And that integer is just going to be the process ID for whatever this process value was when it ran. So it might be, you know, call grind dot out dot six twenty four or something like that. And so then we're going to run the data analysis tool, call grind annotate, that's going to take the data file and turn it into a human readable form. So we give it the name of the file, call grind dot out dot whatever that integer value was. Uh, we're going to throw a couple of extra flags in here, um, inclusive, uh, on, and tree. And this is going to be what actually gives us a breakdown of the individual functions and who called them. And we'll get closer to the, the kind of breakdown that we saw in gprof with those flags in use. Otherwise, you can wind up with a, a pretty compact set of flags there. So let's give that a try first. And then we'll uh, come back and talk about it a little bit more. So, and we're back with our sorter example. I'm just going to get rid of that gmon.out so we don't have it cluttering things up. So, I'm going to recompile with the dash g flag, my sorter.cpp. We'll throw that into an executable named sorter. And then, make sure we've got it. And then we'll run our valgrind. Our tool is callgrind. Oh, that didn't show up well on the slides. It is actually two dashes for the option there. The tool is callgrind. We're running sorter. And um, I don't know. Let's pick a data size of a thousand, something like that. Um, so we run it. Valgrind is going to do its analysis. Uh, the program's going to run. And then at the end, oops, 
we'll see that it's produced this call grind dot out dot uh, three five nine one in this particular case. So let's take an analysis of that using our call grind annotate annotate um, call grind dot out dot uh, what was my number there three five nine one and I want this to be inclusive. And I want the tree format. And I'm going to pipe this into less because it might spew out a bunch. Okay, so now we get our analysis and a bunch of stuff that we don't really care about. Um, I'm going to skip down here and we'll start getting a look at the counts of how many different machine code instructions ran for different functions. Uh, this top level one is actually probably going to be for the program as a whole. And as you can see in this case, we've got a lot of junk from all of the different functions that were included from other libraries which we don't really want. So this is one of those cases where we'll run the program again, but I'm going to use our grep-v to filter out all the lines that contain the word build. And then we'll put that into less and we can get something that's a little closer to just our stuff. So now with all the extra junk filtered out, We've got a breakdown that's a little closer to what we're looking for. Uh, you know, maybe I want to filter out the the start part as well, or maybe use the uh, the underscores to filter out. But down here, we start getting an idea of the time that was spent in specific functions. Again, these are counts of machine code. So we spent 50 million instructions in main and the stuff it called. You know, 20 million in the call to test random, you know, 27 million in the call to test reversed. Um, we spent 18 million in sorter when it got called from test from test random. We spent 23,000 in sorter when it got called from test sorted. So it actually was much more efficient when working on sorted data than on random data. And on that worst case scenario where it got called with the reverse sorted data. Right, we ran basically 26 million instructions. So now you start seeing a better breakdown of the behavior of our sort function depending on what kind of data it was given. And again, if we start running our sorting program on different data set sizes, we can get an idea of, okay, well, you know, it took 18 million on a, a data set of size 1,000, you know, whatever millions when we run it with a data set of size 5,000 and whatever data set with size 10,000, and you start plotting out all these different points. So this is, again, a way that we can use our profiling tool to start building up a map of where our CPU time went, which functions were the bottleneck, and in cases like this, which specific uses of them created that bottleneck. Right, the, the sorter called from on sorted data would worked out quite nicely. All right. So we've got our um, runtime analysis and this call grind annotate. Again, it spewed a whole bunch of extra garbage that we filtered out with the grep dash V. And then for each of the functions, Again, it gives us a breakdown of how many instructions, which functions called it, which functions it called. And again, we can see, oh, this was something else I, I didn't clarify when we were looking at the data there. But if you see something like this, right, it's the number of instructions. Uh, let's take a look at this line. Right, the asterisk indicates a function that was called from where and what it called. Right, so in this case, G was called from main and g called function i in this particular sort of three line example. And in that context, when called from main and when calling i, you know, g took 2,000 instructions, main took 6,000, including g's. Um, 
I took 500, so 500 of that 2,000 was from calling I. Right? It gives you a breakdown of the information, the calls, and where the time was spent. All right, so that's the sort of uh, CPU time analysis. We can use Valgrind as well to do memory analysis. So we still need the compilation with dash G, so we can hang on to that. But this time, when we run Valgrind, we're going to use a different tool. So Massif is the one that does the memory analysis for, analysis for us. Same idea as before, where you know we run the program with whatever arguments it's going to use. And similar idea, it's going to produce a data file that in this case is called massif.out. and whatever process ID happens to come out. And then we'll use this other tool called msprint to analyze the data that it produces. And so we'll take a look at that in just a second. It's going to produce a graph and then a whole bunch of snapshots of information that we'll take a look at. So the, uh, the graph will show us kind of visually the use of memory as the program ran, you know, where it peaked, um, you know, and so you can see, you'll be able to see the, the memory use increasing and then potentially decreasing. I think in our program, it's just going to pretty much stay flat. But uh, it gives you an idea of how much dynamically allocated mem bleh, memory was used. Uh, if you use the right flags, you can get it to specify how much stack space was used, how much total memory was used. So there's lots of information that you can pull from this. And when we get down there, it, we'll see that it takes a series of snapshots of memory as the program runs. So, you know, it might take seven or 10 or something like that snapshots, and it'll number them zero through six or whatever. And for each of those, it will tell you how many machine code instructions had run by the time we hit that snapshot. So you get an idea of where in the run it was. It shows the total memory in use by the program. It shows the amount of heap dynamically allocated memory in use. It's possible that when you use things like new to do dynamic allocation, that new actually allocates a little bit more memory than you asked for. So it breaks down the dynamic memory into, into how much you actually asked for and how much extra you also got. And then it gives the size of the stack. Uh, usually this option is off, so that's probably just going to show zero when we take a look at this. So we'll give this a try and see how we go. And let me get my windows organized here. Okay. So same sort of idea. We've got our program. It's been compiled. Uh, let's remove that call grind dot out. Okay, so we want to run valgrind. And this time the tool we want to use is massif. We want to run our sorter. And again, let's use the size of 1000 for this. And it goes through, it runs, program produces the output it does normally. And if we have a look, then we see that we've got our 3604 is the uh, the process ID it used this time. So we've got massif.out.3604 has got all this extra data in it. So now we want to use that msprint program to analyze massif.out.3604. And so, oops, how about I pipe that into less so that it doesn't just go zimic, skimming past us there. All right, so I mentioned that what it does it is produces <laughs> a graph of the memory use. So if you're using a program with dynamically allocated memory where you wind up you know, adding to a linked list or a tree or something like that over time, then you'll see that your memory use grows slowly over the course of the run. And maybe if you start deallocating things, it starts declining after a certain point. In our program, we just used all the memory right at once. So you just see the memory use go whomp straight up and then it's flat from that point on. So. In our case, the graph isn't very interesting, but you get the idea that it just produces a, a quick, simple ASCII graph of the time use over time. Yeah, the memory use over time, rather. So it tells you how many snapshots of memory it took over the course of time. So it took seven snapshots in this case. And then for each of the seven snapshots, it tells us when that took place, just as the count of the number of machine code instructions that it run, the total amount of memory that had been in use, um, how much of that was dynamically allocated the heap, 
uh, how much was extra beyond what was actually asked for, and then the stack space, but again, we've got that option turned off, so that's just zero. So it goes through and does this analysis for us, and if you just ignore this part in the middle for a second, it goes through and does the, the seven snapshots, right? And we get this idea of how much memory was in use over time. At the point in the program where the most memory was in use, it gives you a further breakdown of what percent of the memory allocation came from different function calls. So how was that space actually allocated? And in our case, most of that took place with internal library um, information. So that's all happening in the background someplace. If you're actually using things like new or malloc or whatever it might be, then in a specific function, then you'll see um, perhaps more useful breakdown, a more useful breakdown of uh, where the allocations came from. Um, you can throw in additional flags for Valgrind that tell it to do things like leak checks, where it will go through and try and analyze your code and see if it detected any uh, memory problems as it ran, but we'll leave those options for the time being. All right, so that is the idea. Um, we've had a chance to play with GProf, we've had a chance to play with Valgrind, and yeah, we'll plug ahead from there.